Here we have list two of shortcuts, Wednesday, May 3rd. We've got classic rock, metal, uh, prog. I don't think we've got any pop today. Anyway, we'll get through it. Uh, I, I have to start here. So... Tom Waits is, uh, to my mind, maybe the greatest living songwriter, certainly the most distinctive voice and persona. Uh, I've traveled around the world at the drop of a hat, practically, while my wife was pregnant to go see him in live in concert. Uh, one of the readings at my wedding were the lyrics to a Tom Waits song. Um, we made a wedding CD for all of our guests and there were some Waitsian references on it. Uh, I, have a, I have a small company and it's named 16 Shells after a song on, is it this album or is it Rain Dogs? Oh, I'm just checking, it's on this album. <laughs> I forgot 16 shells from a 30 odd six. Yeah, a murder song. This is the Japanese first press with Obi of Tom Waits' masterpiece, Swordfish Trombones. Now, there is lore attached to everything Tom Waits. Um, this being the first of his records where he explored a more avant-garde side to his songwriting. Um, he'd met the love of his life, Kathleen Brennan. They were married and they made this record it features, to my mind, classic after classic. I put a couple on this week's playlist. Uh, I've got this record on my shelf, this exact pressing with Obi. I play it all the time. Even though my wife is like, squints her eyes and goes, no, not Tom Waits. And then after a little while, she'll hear a Tom Waits song. And she'll go, who's that? That's, not, that's pretty good. And I go, that's Tom Waits. You know, the tuba on the, or it may even be a euphonium, I'm not sure, on the sleeve lets you get a sense of the production value where anything and everything is an instrument. You've got to follow the lyrics. They're absolutely extraordinary. Um, I could spend all 20 minutes of this video just talking about swordfish trombones and the influence it generated on a, on a generation of uh, singer-songwriters. But, you know, it's not just about him. Mark Rebo, the guitarist, is phenomenal. Like, an amazing guitarist. Keith Richards pops up on this record. Uh, their best mates. It's just a stunner. I'm actually indulging in this list in pulling to the top my personal favorites so this is another of my favorite bands the b-52s this is their second record wild planet uh to my mind their best record it's playful distinctive uh kate nielsen and the, and you know, the folks that's vocally off kilter and weird, but yet at times beautiful and melodic. It makes me want to dance. It's just wonderful. <laughs> I can't tell you how great Wild Planet by the B-52s is. This next record I have right at the top of the list, more because of its idiosyncratic and rather 
unusual status as the first electronic record by a rock star. It's an unimaginably called electronic sound and it's made by George Harrison. Um, there you can see the Moog 3 synthesizer that he plays. In fact, George Harrison painted this cover art. This is an image of the office of one of the engineers, maybe the lead engineer or producer. And it kind of represents really the troubled nature of the label at that time. Now, the label I'm going to have to show you is interesting because it's not what you think. Of course, 19, this was released in 1969. I think it was made in 68, maybe released in 69. It was his second solo album, his first being Wonderwall, which was a name stolen by those Beatles apologists, Oasis, many years later. You can see here, this is on the Zapple label. This is record two on the Zapple label. Record one being a John Lennon and Yoko Ono effort for the Lions. And uh, it was a short-lived offshoot of the Apple label um, designed and made for their more avant-garde records of which this surely is one. It's each side is basically uh, view uh, the, the sound of George Harrison trying to figure out what a synthesizer does. It's discordant. It's decidedly odd. It's decidedly rare and very very unusual that's the the japanese insert you go a long way before you find that record again uh which hands me lends me to two of the greatest double albums in the history of recorded music we have led zeppelin's Physical Graffiti and The Beatles White Album. Now the fact that The Beatles White Album is a white sleeve in Japan has been quite problematic over the years. You can see here how clean this copy is. I have sent multiple copies of this back to Japan because the covers are a disgrace. You can see it's got the images of the band all present and correct. And the reason that the sleeve is so problematic is that the um, humidity in Japan causes awful mottling of the sleeve. And if it's not protected, it can be a real mess. I can see the posters in here too. It's in fantastic condition, really hard to find in this condition. And this is a beautiful physical graffiti. Uh, I have that exact pressing of physical graffiti on my own shelf. It is dynamic, bassy, massive drum sounds. The clarity of Japanese vinyl at that time really lends itself to physical graffiti in particular because it isn't about the sheer brutish power of, say, Led Zeppelin 2 and Led Zeppelin 4. The one criticism of Led Zeppelin 3 is it can be a little bit light, on um, some pressings. So I've been kind of pushing back on the folks in Shibuya because of that. Uh, but because Physical Graffiti features, you know, acoustic songs and country songs and rock and roll songs and uh, psychedelic songs, it's, it, it, that clarity really helps with, with listening and appreciating the record. When you've got a record that you're so familiar with, you need that clarity so you hear more, so it gives you that, um, I think, that appreciation of what they were doing. Um, anyway, two Stone Cold classics, and Japanese pressings are both really lovely things. Now, this next band might be new to quite a few of you, so bear with me. Uh, firstly, let's talk about the label. Brain. Brain and Kudu 
you hear me say this over and over, my two favourite record labels of all time, Kudu for Soul and Funk and Brain for Prog. Now, this band have a terrible name. Who are you growling at, Bowie? A terrible, terrible name. A German prog rock band called Jane. This is their record, Fire, Water, Earth and Air. Now, the band that they are clearly leaning way into with this particular record is Pink Floyd. And uh, what does that mean? It means that you get this really deep, resonant sound that is not really about Pink Floyd's and, say, Dark Side of the Moon's more idiosyncratic avant-garde stuff. This is more about their guitar bass songs. So, so it's got a, a wonderful feel. It's quite mellow in places. It meanders along in places. Uh, Klaus, I think it's Klaus Hess is the name of the guitar player. He's so good. You'd be blown away. You can't hear this anywhere. It's not on Spotify. I wish I could tell you. You just have to trust me. It's fantastic. And you can then explore the Jane discography up and down. And you'll hear very different sounds as you as you go either earlier in their career or later. Um, anyway, I love them to bits. And it's uh, it's a wonderful record. I, yeah, I love it. Now we've got three records that are very different. Let's have a look at these. We have a white label promo of Proud Records called Fire Breaks the Dawn. Think, ah, uh, gosh, think Iron Maiden. Um, the faster, earlier records of Iron Maiden. What about this? I'll save that one. Uh, the Pretty Maids. This is Red Hot and Heavy. Often appears on the list of the greatest 500 metal records of all time. This, this record's dirtier and grimier. But again, both of these have released 1984. So that really rigid guitar sound. That, that uh, you know, I'm, I hesitate to particularly proud. You could... I've heard some people describe Proud as, you know, speed metal, but I don't, I don't quite hear that. It's not quite that type of noise. Um, but the vocals are wonderful as well. And then the third of this little trilogy is this record, the debut album by Vixen. A little bit earlier, I think this was 82, but <laughs> I thought this was pretty great. So this is the uh, a poster that comes with this record. I'm going to fold it out delicately. Look at that. Now there's some hair. Got to be one of the earliest all-female metal bands. And they had a few hits, and they're all on this record. Um... So there you go. I bet you weren't expecting Vixen. <laughs> That's all part of the fun. Vixen. Pretty Maids. Proud. Three great metal records from the 1980s. Who says I don't spoil you? All right, now we've got some classics that I'm going to run through a little bit more quickly. On the Atlantic label, a really lovely copy of King Crimson's In the Court of the Crimson King. My favourite song on here isn't 20th Century Schizoid Man, it's Epitaph. What a dramatic <laughs> song. What a debut album that is. Uh, going from a debut to a final record. Oh, well... For those of you who know your Beatles history, maybe not final, but you know what I mean. This is Abbey Road, a really nice Japanese press. Now we've got a couple of George Harrison records and links. We've got the White Album, we've got Abbey Road. This has been super popular in the club. Japanese pressing, best of George Harrison. 
One side, Beatles, one side, Harrison Solo. So Beatles, you've got something. If I needed someone, here comes the sun, tax man. Think for yourself, for you blues, and while my guitar gently weeps. And then the George Harrison side, my sweet Lord, give me love. You, Bangladesh, dark horse, what a song that is. And what is life? Ah, final song. Really interesting and fun compilation. <laughs> Don't be expecting this one either. What about this? <laughs> Sticks. The Japanese hard cardboard gatefold of Paradise Theatre. Look at that. Rather wonderful it is too. Now this one's interesting because, and it's super, I don't think you'll be able to see this on the video, um, but it's got, maybe you can slightly see, it's got etching all the way around the vinyl. Uh, etching of the band's name, some images. It's really rather cool. I've never seen it before in Japanese vinyl. I believe it was ubiquitous against across all the presses, but I've read great reports of the quality of the Japanese release. This, oh, I said, is there pop? Of course there's pop. This is maybe the greatest pop album of all time. Parallel Lines, Blondie, if you don't have Seek this out on the original Chrysalis label. Oh man, what about this? Some 70s rock par excellence. Burn by Deep Purple. The best of White Snake. So, this is the late 70s vintage of White Snake. So, it's David Coverdale. It's Really good. It's so much better than you might think. And first time ever on Shortcuts list, the Japanese first press of Queen's debut album. The Seven Seas of Rye rocking out on that one. A few more to go. Tom Tom Club, the offshoot slash spin off slash uh, hugely successful. Um, band created by the rhythm section of the mighty Talking Heads. We have The Doors' greatest hits on the Chrysalis label. To me, the most overrated band in the history of recorded music. Well, that's just me. I've had this debate with many of my friends who tell me I'm clearly wrong. What about this? I've heard people asking me for this record. I can't remember who you were, but here it is. George Harrison, Japanese first press of Cloud Nine. <laughs> and then finally, what about this? The soundtrack to Easy Rider. The hippie, psychedelic, weird movie. And Peter Fonda that kind of closed out the 60s with songs from Steppenwolf and others. And this is the Japanese first press on red translucent vinyl. How cool is that? All right, that's the list. This two shortcuts for Wednesday, May 3rd, 9 p.m. The price list will go out. Be there or be rectangular. And um, if you have any questions or if you want to know anything in advance or if you have any feedback or if you think these lists are bollocks, you've got to let me know. I'll try and make them better. And... Love hearing from you. Thank you for those who've been subscribing. Thank you for those who've been leaving comments. Love it. It's great. Never thought this would ever happen. 
And if anything caught your eye, let me know on Wednesday. Or if you want any questions in advance, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching. And I'll see you on Wednesday. Thanks. Bye.